from artistry in clay to a specialist in bricks and mortar. And at this charming house at Lymington, Hampshire, part of which dates back to 1660, we called in on one of the world's most distinguished bricklayers, although we should admit that these examples of his work are not what has gained him his international reputation. Our bricklayer is, in fact, the famous author Dennis Wheatley, whose novels, translated into 25 languages, have sold the fantastic total of 14 million copies to date. Yet, strangely enough, this is his main hobby, and the walls of all shapes and sizes in his three-acre garden testify to his skill and experience. To most of us, it may seem a purely physical outlet for Mr. Wheatley's energies, but he describes it as a satisfying intellectual activity from which one can get great artistic pleasure. In fact, he feels so strongly about it that he's just written a book on the subject to spread the cult to the uninitiated. More in keeping with the public image of the successful author are the seemingly endless rows of first editions in Dennis Wheatley's extensive library where he does his writing. In fact, everything in the library is completely in character. Note, by the way, that he always writes in pencil and rubs out and corrects as he goes, working at the rate of six pages of foolscap in a nine-hour day. You'll notice, too, any number of curios and odd collector's pieces, in most cases too interesting to dismiss in a few words, either from a family collection or sent to him by fans, as in the case of that Maori axe head on the table. This chair, by the way, part of a set of eight worked in tapestry by Mrs. Wheatley, took two and a quarter years to do and have in them over a million stitches. Finally, another unusual hobby, this time with stamps, although his interest doesn't lie so much in collecting them as in their subsequent use, laying them under glass to make a decorative table. Each table has a particular theme, in this case, the stamps are all foreign first issues. These are just some of the ways in which that great imagination remains fertile after 30 years of writing. Let's hope it continues so for the next 30 years.